We have new information tonight as we continue to investigate a fence company that has several judgments against it for taking customer deposits and not putting up their fences. It's a story we first brought you a few weeks ago. The owner of Metro Fence admitted to us he took customer money but was now out of business and not planning to do the work. Since our stories aired, we've learned from customers that the New York Attorney General's office has contacted some of them about their complaints. Also, a lawsuit reveals Metro Fence has 22 more customers with problems that have not been fully addressed. And the owner of Metro Fence is an elected official. He's on the Albion Town Council in Oswego County. During our NBC3 investigation, the owner of Metro Fence admitted he owed five homeowners a total of $20,000 in deposits he took for work he didn't do. Several customers took him to small claims court. We were there as an Oswego City judge ruled in favor of the customer. Rich Mullen and Metro Fence did not show for the court date and did not communicate with the court. His customers claim they stopped hearing from him when it was time for work to be done, despite prepaying deposits of several thousand dollars. At the time, we could only reach him by phone. I mean, this is what's happened in, in you know, um, and I apologize for it, but you know, this is, this is what's happened and we're trying to work through it. We did not meet Mullen in person until we caught up with him at a town meeting in Oswego County. Since our initial story aired a few weeks ago, we learned he was elected last fall to the Albion Town Board. We're told not to record. Aaron. Some members of the town board tried to keep our photographer from recording video at their meeting. When the meeting ended, Mullen avoided the camera. I told you I had nothing to say to you. We'll talk to you right here. I had nothing to say to you. You didn't mention that you were on the, common, uh, the town council. Right. So that's why we're here. You're a public official. Other Albion town board members sure, headed for the door. Forward. What do you guys think about what's no going comment. on? No comment. It'd be easy if we just talked to you. What's up? I'm not talking to you. I said no comment. Well, then we'll wait. You're going to wait. He went into the town office and closed the door. Now, what's your name? My name's Aaron Walter. And you're, what's your role here? Town supervisor. Town supervisor? Yes. And so what, what's your thought about having somebody on the town council who's I don't have any comment who's not regarding going to court It has nothing to do with town business. Well, it does because it does he, not was, have he was just to elected to business. office, but he's, not, he's had court appearances no, no scheduled. No more comment, sir. Okay. I, I'm asking to talk to Mr. Mullen about... Mr. Go up to his house. We've been to his house. Okay, and you talked to him. He wasn't there. You talked to him on the phone. Nobody can reach him. You talked to him on the phone. Right. I saw you talk to him on right. the phone. So you're aware of what we're here for then? I'm aware that you've spoken to Mr. Mullen, yes. Right. And at the time, we weren't aware that he was an elected official in the town of Albion. Okay. Since then, we have been. So we came to tonight's meeting for an opportunity to have him talk about running for office in while also not going Excuse to court appearance. Excuse me. Small claims court is not the only legal conflict for Metro Fence. When we first talked to Mullen last month, he said warranty work for past customers yeah. put him in a financial hole. Mullen sued B&H Wholesale, claiming the supplier failed to make good on warranties, dating back to 2011. Court documents show Metro Fence claimed B&H owed it just over $225,000 because 19 customers had fences needing replacing because of failed parts. Metro had already placed two others. B&H countersued. Court filings indicate the supplier claims Metro Fence owes them $51,000 in unpaid invoices plus interest. This unresolved case has had no public action for the last year. We hope for an explanation from owner Richard Mullen about the lawsuit, running for elected office, and missing required small claims court appearances. Here's what's town. happened. You're in the middle. Yes. So and you're in my building. Right. So it's not your building. I'm the town supervisor. You are. It's not your building, though. I mean, that to be clear. All he has to do is come out, and we'll talk to him. He doesn't want to come out. He did not come out. To the supervisor threatened to call the Oswego County Sheriff. We left the building and waited for a half hour to talk with Richard Mullen. Eventually, a deputy did show up. Are they calling in on you guys? Holding them hostage? The deputy talked with Mullen inside the building. Mullen avoided our camera by getting picked up at the back door by the white van you see pulling away. Now, one of the customers who was included in the back and forth case between Metro Fence and wholesale supplier B&H has waited for four years for his fence to be fixed properly. James Austin filed a complaint with the Attorney General. He received a form letter reply from the Attorney General's Bureau of Consumer Fraud last fall. After our story aired earlier this month, the Attorney General's office contacted him again, saying he might be hearing soon from B&H Wholesale. He has not heard from them yet. 
As of this, this today, no further action has taken place from the Attorney General. We will be staying in contact with the Attorney General's office to follow up on the customer complaints. They told us today there is nothing new to report.